Next, we talk about voltage drop. When conducting an energy audit, be sure to test the refrigerator circuit for any voltage drop. Find the electrical circuit associated with the refrigerator. Check it using a meter that puts a 15 amp load on the circuit for a short period of time and measures the voltage drop on it. Voltage drop is a measure of how much a circuit's voltage fluctuates or drops once a load is applied. Voltage drop can be calculated by comparing a voltage measurement with no load on the circuit to a voltage measurement under full load. Voltage drop can be easily measured with any quality circuit analyzer. This kind of device puts a full load onto the circuit without tripping a breaker or causing any interruption to equipment on the line. It compares the voltage measurement at full load with a measurement at no load and calculates the voltage drop. The National Electric Code, or NEC, recommends that the combined voltage drop of the electrical system, branch circuit, and feeders not exceed 5% for optimum efficiency. It is important to note that this is a recommendation and that local inspectors or other governing bodies may use their own judgment for an acceptable level of voltage drop for the electrical system. Simply tightening the connections in the electric outlet might solve a voltage drop problem, but if several outlets show the same problem, then there may be a need to recommend review by a qualified electrician. Next, we look over the basics of insulation. Insufficient levels of insulation along with air leaks cause a lot of wasted energy in most homes. It's important to understand what insulation is, what it does, and how to inspect it. Heating and cooling accounts for more than half the energy used in the average home in the U.S. Depending on how energy inefficient the home is, it can be as high as three quarters of total energy costs for heating and cooling. Effective insulation and minimal air leaks will save homeowners money, keep the home cooler in the summer and warmer in the winter, and make the home more comfortable by maintaining uniformity in terms of temperature throughout. So, how does insulation work? Insulation provides resistance to heat flow. The more heat flow resistance the insulation provides, the lower the heating and cooling costs. Heat flows naturally from a warmer space to a cooler space. Remember this one for test purposes. In the cold winter, this heat flows directly from all heated living spaces to adjacent unheated spaces, such as attics, garages, basements, underfloor crawl spaces, and even to the outdoors. Heat flow can also move indirectly through the interior ceilings, walls, and floors, wherever there is a difference in temperature. During the cooling season, heat flows from the exterior to the interior of a building. To keep everyone inside comfortable, the heat lost in the winter must be replaced by the heating system, and the heat gained in the summer must be removed by the cooling system. A properly insulated home will decrease this heat flow by providing an effective resistance to the flow of heat. All forms of insulation mentioned earlier in the course do their job by limiting air movement. The still air inside the insulation is an effective insulator because it eliminates convection. Still air also has low conduction, so heat generally doesn't flow very well via conduction through insulation. Some foams are filled with special gases that provide additional resistance to heat flow. When considering reflective insulation, Know that it limits heat that travels in the form of radiation. Some reflective insulation also reduces air movement, but not as much as other insulation types. A common misconception people have is that insulation limits air's ability to move with air sealing. Insulation reduces air movement only within the space it occupies. It cannot limit air movement through the other pathways nearby. For example, the insulation in a particular wall cavity will not affect the air leakage that may take place around a door frame. Adding insulation will not likely have the same effect as air sealing. Insulation's resistance to heat flow is measured or rated in terms of its thermal resistance, better known by inspectors as the R value. The R value of insulation. Insulation is rated in terms of thermal resistance, called the R value. The R value is an indicator of insulation's resistance to heat flow. The higher the R value, the greater the insulating effectiveness. The R value depends on the type of insulation, which includes its material, thickness, and density. If you are measuring the R value of multiple layers of insulation, whether it is in a wall or at the attic floor, add the R values of all the individual layers together. 
the installation of additional insulation increases the R value and the resistance to heat flow. The effectiveness of the insulation's resistance to heat flow also depends on how and where the insulation is installed. Please write down the R values for some common building materials that will appear while the music plays in the background on your screen.